Some transplanted Wisconsinites get set to ride out Milton. Others who live here are waiting to see if they'll be needed to help in Florida, cleaning up the damage like the damage you're seeing here. Sam Kramer joins us now in studio. And Sam, there are two different waiting games happening right now. Yeah, Heather Steph, for those in Milton's path, including someone who used to call Milwaukee home, they can only wait things out to assess the damage. While dozens of Wisconsin firefighters and other first responders, they are also on standby in case they're needed for search and rescue efforts. It's really whipping around here. From his home of the last three years in Dunedin, Florida. There's a difference between Florida shirts and Hawaiian shirts, I might say. Bill Zaffiro says a little humor helps with hurricanes. I was joking that I was behaving like a northerner with being overly prepared, but I bought things that I knew would be useful. God forbid a hurricane should hit here. And a lot of that's coming in, into use now. With his windows boarded at 52 feet above sea level, Zaphiros is now hunkered down as Hurricane Milton moves in. You actually do feel a little concerned anyway, um, but to think that the worst is yet to come is, is really not a nice thought at all. Closer to home, we saw things like semi trucks that were wrapped around trees 30 feet in the air. Wisconsin Task Force One is back from a nine day deployment to North Carolina as part of recovery efforts for Hurricane Helene. Doug Vrecek leads the team that specializes in highly technical calls like building collapses and swift water rescues. Um, a lot of roads were blocked. Either the culverts or the bridges were washed out or their roads were blocked by trees. So we did a lot of welfare checks going from house to house, making sure that they, they knew what was going on. The team's now on standby should Florida place another call for help. At this point now, you almost want to let the storm pass before you bring more people into it because of the whole support system. You'll need to provide them. Well, this task force is required to be self-sufficient for up to 72 hours upon their assignment. So they bring their own food, generators, diesel and gas, even cots, should shelters be unavailable. This team is made up of firefighters and other experts like canine handlers and doctors who are trained to respond to all of the most complex calls. Steph? Oh, we are so fortunate to have teams and brave people like those people.